Hello, my name is Andrei. Welcome back uh, to my channel. Today, the same like last time, we'll talk about uh, Hugging Face and uh, Gradio uh, library, which helps to build UI for ML applications. I'll explain how to work with uh, CSV files, how you could upload CSV file through Gradio interface, and how you could consume CSV uh, file data and load it into the Pandas uh, data frame. And beside that, I'll, uh, I'll explain how, when you get the error uh, in Gradio application for some reason, how you could read information about this error, understand what's going wrong, and uh, this uh, should give you the idea what should be fixed. Because um, um, maybe there is this information on Gradio websites already, but I didn't manage to find it there. So I decided to record this quick video and uh, give you the head start. Okay, so let's uh, uh, jump into uh, action. And this is the application that we're building. And the idea of this application uh, is uh, that the user should be able to upload a CSV file and then later using a tapas model available on Hugging Face, we should be able to run the query and ask the question about tabular data and get back the result. So obviously we work with uh, CSV files, right? And uh, let me show how it works. So uh, we have example uh, query and uh, there's a taxable CSV file which uh, comes um, by default with the application uh, or you could uh, load your own file and provide your own query. Uh, let's say we're using example um, and then we click submit button and as a result we would get uh, for that query we would get uh, a result uh, displayed in this first section and the second section uh, displays uh, the whole content of the <coughs> csv file if your csv file uh, is longer have more records then out of the box radio uh, provides pagination and you can go through different pages to see the data but uh, default uh, tapas model, which is available on Hugging Face, uh, is trained and supports uh, maximum 64 uh, rows of data and uh, 32 columns, I think. So probably if you want to train your own uh, model to handle more rows, uh, then you need to create a new model with different configuration and train it, uh, train it yourself, probably. Or I'm not sure if you can uh, fine-tune existing model uh, or not. But anyway, this is not the topic of today's video. Today we focus on UI only. Uh, We're not using yet uh, Tapas model. What we did first, we created UI prototype and uh, then we'll plug in the model into this UI. So to summarize, we have an um, option to select example or provide your own query and you could upload your own CSV file or, or use the one for example. And you hit submit button, the data, data uh, gets, it will be uploaded. Uh, CSV file will be processed and uh, based on the query query that you specify Tapas model will execute uh, the search and it will, will bring back the result and on the right side results will be displayed uh, we'll have a result section and we'll have the section which displays all the data because uh, it's useful um, to see actual the whole list, uh, actual data to understand if the query result was correct or no okay and then let's look into the uh, source code itself, uh, we have a uh, main uh, app uh, Python file, uh, Python script, and we have inputs and outputs over here. So for the inputs, uh, first is a search query field, so we specify a text box, and you can uh, specify a bunch of different parameters for each field, uh, which is displayed on Radio UI. Um, you can check uh, more about that in documentation. I found a quite useful label field because it allows you to uh, display custom label next to the field like uh, search query, CSV file result, all data. Instead of uh, out of the box, it would display the label the same like the variable name, uh, but it's quite useful to more user friendly to display actual proper name. Okay, then the, the second input parameter is file and you just uh, specify um, file uh, object as input parameter and radio automatically renders that uh, box where you can upload the file either csv file like in this case or it can be image or, or uh, audio uh, audio or whatever i specify here label as well and for the outputs uh, because we have two outputs first one is the query result second one is the data that we actually uh, uploaded to the application so we have two data frames being uh, uh, returned as, as a result and also we specify labels over here 
So it's enough to specify the data frame and then uh, video UI uh, does uh, the rest of the job. It renders the columns, uh, rows and so on. And by default, uh, if uh, the data frame is more than 25 records, I think you'll get pagination if I'm not wrong. But you can check all that uh, in documentation. Okay, and for the examples, we have a separate section. And what I do here, just provide a query, a sample query text, and I provide a file name, a CSV file name. And CSV file name is located on a, in the root directory next to the Python script. And uh, since uh, the input, uh, second parameter of the input is the radio file, then it automatically uh, is uh, treating example. Um, uh, correctly, and it doesn't think that um, uh, taxable CSV is uh, just a string. It understands that this is the file and it actually uh, is able to process it and uh, load it uh, through the UI correctly. Okay, so let's uh, see uh, how the file is handled. Uh, because in Gradio interface, we point to the execute query function, and this means when we hit submit button, this function will be executed. This function resides in a separate script, tapas. Over here, this is the function, and we get the, uh, one of the input parameters of the function is the file. And uh, we, we can actually uh, go and print, for example, I can run uh, print. And CSV file. Right. Okay, so let's close. Let's restart the video application. Okay, the port is uh, already occupied. It's not stopped yet. So let's use another port. You could use automatic port if you want. Um, so if uh, when application is stopped and port is not yet released, it would assign another port. Okay, now it's up, but we, we need to make sure that here we use uh, proper port. Select example and clean console over here. Uh, submit. And we see that the uh, the type of the input that is coming is a uh, temporary file wrapper and uh, this is Python object and this means that uh, this file exists for the duration of the session. And But we still, uh, what we can do, we can uh, read uh, the name of uh, this file and it will give us a reference to the actual uh, this actual temporary file and this will be a CSV file and we can read uh, data from this CSV file using pandas read CSV function, and we can uh, populate um, data frame out of that. So, for example, if I print out uh, uh, name over here and let's uh, start it again. Okay, now this port is busy. Okay, so let's uh, put 7000, and probably 7000 should be released by now. Okay, it's uh, working and let's go and restart our UI. Okay, should be 7000. Doesn't seem to load. Okay, let's uh, stop it and let's use some different port like 7002 let's see if it works on that port okay let's go to seven. okay this one is working and let's uh, select again the sample query and um, csv file submit and let's go to the log and this this is uh, what uh, we see was printed uh, reference to the temporary file and this is this our CSV file that was uploaded uh, and this this is all what we need we point uh, pandas read CSV uh, function to that name uh, of the temporary file and we specify that delimiter is a comma in, in this case and we load data frame and because we are not using uh, this in this example not using a tapas model so we're not uh, actually doing anything with the data and uh, we're just getting the first row and uh, this will be the first output parameter and the second parameter is a whole data frame and we're just returning this data just for, for
for the test purpose, right? Uh, in the next step, we will plug in Tapas model and we'll do something with the data and probably this will be another video. And what I notice is if your data have um, uh, like uh, empty values, then uh, like uh, for example, for one of the columns would in, in certain row would, would, would not have any value. Uh, then uh, when data is loaded into pandas array, it'll get uh, none. And uh, if you try to display this uh, data frame uh, on radio application, it will break. Uh, the error will be displayed. So let's uh, let's do this and let's go uh, to the CSV file and uh, let's say that we'll remove uh, this one. We'll, we'll we'll leave it empty, for example. Uh, this volume and then we go back to if you could query function and we comment out uh, the method which is replacing all empty values with uh, zero. So we'll have we'll load uh, original data with a missing value and we'll try uh, then to return it back in uh, in the second parameter data frame to, to display it in radio application. Okay, so for that I need uh, to restart again and let's see if uh, it works. Uh, to start application on the same port or not. Uh, no, it doesn't work. Uh, so let's do, let's for now, let's remove the port completely and let's make sure uh, the gradient would assign the port which is not, uh, is not occupied yet. Okay, it's uh, now 7860. Uh, uh, so let's um, copy paste that. And then if we use example, submit, we get the error. Uh, but uh, th this is cryptic, we, we don't have any error description. We don't know what happened. And also in the log file, we don't see anything. Okay, and the way how you can find uh, information about the error, you can open uh, Web Inspector and go to the console. And now let's uh, try to submit data again. Uh, I click. Uh, submit and then we get uh, error on radio UI and we get in uh, in browser log we get information which says the string didn't match the expected pattern. Uh, this is exactly what I was facing and later then uh, I did few experiments and I found out that this problem uh, relates to the fact when uh, there is a missing value in dataset and it's being replaced by none uh, when loading into pandas and for some reason uh, none uh, it breaks radio UI with this error. So the, the, the workaround was to go and uh, replace all missing values with zeros uh, to make sure there are no missing values and then it works fine. So let's, uh, let's do that. Uh, let's go back to our function and let's uncomment uh, the line where uh, for, uh, we call fill uh, a uh, function from pandas to uh, replace all missing values with zero. Okay, and for that will need to restart the server and let's see which port will be assigned now okay, it's 7861 uh, 7, it's different one okay let's so we'll load the application okay, there's some unrelated I guess uh, thing was printed uh, we can ignore it let's uh, select the file again hit submit and we get the data no error anymore Okay, so uh, yeah, and then obviously we can go back in CSV file, bring back the value, and if I uh, restart the app, then obviously now it will work as well because there are no missing values in any way, and uh, we are in we're using this uh, pandas uh, function to replace missing values. But since there are no missing values, nothing happens and it works. But if there will be missing values, now our application would not break uh, because we will replace them. But the key point, how to understand the error is uh, if no, nothing is printed in log uh, in, on server side and nothing is printed on UI, go to the um, browser console and uh, you would find information about uh, error there. Or you can go to the network monitoring and you can see uh, in a, a network request, there's a response and you will see uh, information about the error printed there in the browser.
Okay, so now the last try. Uh, submit and everything working fine. Okay, so to summarize, uh, the idea of this video was to show you how to work with CSV file. Uh, when CSV file is uploaded, how to load uh, data from temporary Python file uh, in, uh, into Pandas data frame uh, of uh, the CSV file that you just uploaded. And also, if you're getting errors uh, painted on UI, how to understand the root cause of the error and get the description of the error by going to the uh, either browser console or browser network uh, monitoring and reading information about the error from uh, the response. So thanks for watching and um, see you next time. Bye.